How's everybody doing tonight? This could be the quietest audience we've had in quite a while. Emeril Lagasse here. Welcome to Emeril Live. Hey, let me ask you a question. What do vanilla beans, blackberries, and pecans all have in common? That's right. Some of my favorite ingredients. We're going to take vanilla bean. I'm going to show you how to make a classic panna cotta tonight. Vanilla bean, little hints of... Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> I'm going to serve them with some soaked figs. I'm going to show you about that. Soaked figs. Unbelievable. And blackberries. I'm going to use them in a fruity mixture for a classic pan dowdy. Have you ever had a pan dowdy? Oh. Whew. And then, I got to tell you, my friend Gigi in New Orleans, this thing is so kicked up, I decided to do it tonight on the show for you all. I'm going to do Gigi's kicked up carrot cake tonight. Just... Oh, yeah, babe. Kicked up. Oh, yeah. And I got to tell you, also, I'm really quite excited. You know why? We got Doc Gibbs in the Emerald man. <laughs> it is definitely desserts to die for tonight, right here on Emerald Live. All right, desserts. How lucky are you? Oh, very. the dessert show. Where are you guys from? New York. All right, New York too. I know where these guys are from. <laughs> They're from New York. How's the doc feeling tonight? You got to be great. happy. I mean, you've been asking me and asking me about you know this dessert stuff and dessert stuff. You know and it. And dessert stuff. So I'm ready. We got dessert stuff going on. Let's tonight. get it on. <laughs> Panna cotta, it's basically a milk dessert. Love it. Simple, but really delicious. Let me show you how it's done. We take some whipping cream and a little bit of milk. It's sort of an eggless custard, if you will, this dessert. Generally served with a little bit of honey. We're going to kick ours up tonight. Oh, yeah. A little sugar. We want to dissolve the sugar. And that's why we're going to bring this up to heat. Now, folks doing this at home, are going to be very careful that you keep an eye on. Whenever you have cream or milk on the stove, you keep an eye on it, unless you want to renovate your house. <laughs> that's why the firemen and I are tight like this. Now, what we're going to flavor this milk cream mixture with is a couple of things. A little bit of limp orange peel, and I just use a peeler, or you can use a zester as well. And if you don't have either one of them, you can just take a paring knife, and you want just the, the peel of it. You don't want the, the white of it, the pith. You just want the peel, because there's a lot of oil, natural oil in there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of squeeze that's why you get a little peel when you have an espresso. It's the, the oil and the peel is what we're trying to go after here to flavor this milk and cream mixture. Now, the other ingredient, vanilla bean. Now, you have to split the vanilla bean to get the flavor. So we'll take a little paring knife on the pod, split it. Then inside the vanilla bean, we're going to scrape all of that delicious vanilla and we're just going to put that right inside of our mixture. You with me so far? Yeah. Now, get all this nice vanilla out of here. All right, so we're going to bring this up to temperature. 
Now, meanwhile, I told you we were going to kick ours up a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to take some figs, cut them in half or quarters, whatever you like. I love figs. Oh, look at that. It's a fig for a four-year-old. <laughs> now, Vinsanta, this stuff here, it's an Italian dessert wine. It's about 17% alcohol, generally served at after dinner as a dessert wine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little of that, soak our figs with that a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, babe. We're gonna take some of this. It's gonna be a good show. Three quarters of a bottle of Vin Santa, and we haven't even got anything made yet. So I'm gonna bring this Vin Santa up, but I don't wanna flame it. I just wanna bring it up to temperature. Cause then when it gets warm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle some gelatin. And then there's a cooking term called blooming. Hey, I don't make these things up. And what that means is that once it comes up to temperature, blooming it is means we're gonna whisk the gelatin into this. Eventually, we're gonna take the gelatin Vinsanta mixture into the milk cream mixture, but we're gonna strain that first, okay? Well, I'll show you exactly how it's done. Panna cotta, Vinsanta marinated figs when we come back. We're gonna rock out with Doc Gibbs. Stick around. Doc. Yes, indeed. Cliff Charles, Teddy on drums, and Dr. Gibbs. All right. The Vinsanta I turned off. It's warm. Now I'm going to show you how difficult it is to do that blooming thing. You just sprinkle the gelatin. And we're going to just bloom the gelatin now which means to dissolve it. So when it gets cold, guess what happens? It gets thick. That's why we're gonna take this now, the bloom gelatin, turn off our cream and milk mixture, and add that. So now it's gonna, that's what's gonna be the thickener. That's what's gonna be the thickener for our panna cotta. All right, now, before it gets thick and it's bloomed, <laughs> we're gonna strain it. Strain out that, the pods of the vanilla and a little bit of that peel, but we got all the flavor in there. Now, sometimes what I do with the, uh, the pods, let them just dry out naturally. You stick them in your little bit of your sugar, you'll have vanilla sugar. So there's still a lot of flavor in there. All right, now what happens, we divide the mixture into these little ramekins or whatever kind of molds you have. And you let it cool. And then it's best to refrigerate for about four hours. Something is definitely in the air, Doc. <clears throat> I think I got a frog in there. Yep. <laughs> I love that remedy. Except I tried it last night, it didn't work. I gotta bring it to the next level tonight. All right, see all the nice vanilla bean in there? Make sure you get it all out. 
Let it cool four hours later. You can even do these, folks, the day ahead of time. Very simple dessert. Very, very delicious. One of my favorites. Then what you do when you're ready to serve these, take a little paring knife and just kind of go around the outside of the molds. A little bit outside. The other trick that you can do is just dip it real quick in a little bit of warm water like that. That's what unseal that, that little, the gelatin mixture that we had, right? <laughs> Let's unseal it some more. Okay, there we go. Now, look at all the beautiful specks of the vanilla bean, you see that? Now, how I like to serve this, great consistency, by the way. Some people put a little bit of cocoa on it, okay? Other people just prefer a little powdered sugar, okay? For me, we take the Vinsanta figs, see? Put a few of those around. Couple on top, why not? Some of that wine. Also, some people like to just put a little bit of honey like that. Just drizzle a little bit of honey. There you have it, panna cotta. I'm gonna fix you one now. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm gonna fix you guys one. When we come back, another notch, stick around. the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Just joining us, Emerald Lagasse here. We're kicking up desserts tonight. Panna cotta. We just finished that with the, uh, with the figs. Hope you're enjoying that. One of my all-time favorite is a pan dowdy. And uh, it's a little different than a cobbler. You can use really whatever any kind of fruits that you can find. Isn't that light? Delicious, huh? The Vincenta figs there. Oh. So I have some pears, and I have some peaches, nectarines, whatever you can find that's beautiful, fresh fruit of the season. Some berries I have, and um, you just kind of cut them into little wedges, and then, uh, then I'll show you, it's very simple to, to make. Hottest thing is making the pie crust, which is not difficult at all. So whatever great fruit, take it inside of a bowl, that assorted fruit, little pinch of salt, believe it or not, just kind of enhances the natural sugar. A little Grand Marnier. Yeah. Then, to that, we're going to add the juice of a lemon. Not too many seeds.
and the seed patrol. <laughs> now, I'm going to sort of mix that up a little bit. A little sugar, a little salt, different fruits. Let's add some berries in here. Add some strawberries as well if you want to cut them. If they're that big, that's great. Just make sure it's good, tasty fruit. Then, there's a little bit more lemon juice. A little clove, ground clove. A little fresh nutmeg. Cute, huh? It's even got its own house. Just put it right back in there. Goes away. Little cornstarch, which is really gonna be part of the whole thing that's gonna thicken this up. Just a little bit of cornstarch here. And believe it or not, I use a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Just a little, little bit. Then, I'm gonna toss this all together. And in a buttered, now one thing is folks, you might wanna taste this, see if the fruit is sweet enough. If it's not sweet enough, you can always come back and add just a little bit of sugar to make it as sweet as you like. In a buttered pie dish, like this, you add your fruits and all the juice that's in there, get it all. And then you make a simple pie dough, what I call a one, two, three pie dough. You want to kind of just roll it out. I like to make it the day before, keep it in the ice box, take it out, wrap it in plastic wrap, put it in the ice box. Take it out when you're ready, let it get room temperature about 20, 30 minutes, and then it's really easy to work. I go about an eighth of an inch or so. It doesn't have to be perfect for this pandowdy, so I'm not looking for the perfect round shape here. I'm just Kind of go rustic style. Just put it over. And you just kind of tuck the excess inside instead of crimping like a traditional pie. Just sort of go in the inside like this. Now, about 360 degrees, we're gonna bake it for the first 30 minutes. I'm going to show you this. What I do is I just brush the top with a little bit of whipping cream, which gives it a really nice color. Yeah, people just think that egg does that. But a little whipping cream like this, I'll show you another little thing that I do. Then, sprinkle a little bit of sugar. Now, this goes in the oven for the first 30 minutes, okay? Now, this is what kind of makes it special pandowdy. See, it's in the oven there. 30 minutes later, it looks like this. Oh, wait. There's a reason why they call it pandowdy. Because what you do now for the next 30 minutes is you take, you take it out with a spatula and you kind of encave some of the crust. You see that? Some of the crust falls, press it inside there. Now, we'll put it back for the next 30 minutes. You with me so far? Yeah. Pan Dowdy. I love that name. Pan Dowdy. We're gonna Pan Dowdy out here with Doc Gibbs. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs.
white band. Welcome back. You just joined us, kicking up desserts tonight. After the next 30 minutes, once we in sort of get the uh, pie crust smooshed down there when we encaved it, right? It finishes cooking, a lot of the moisture evaporates, which is exactly the process of why we're doing that. So doesn't that look great? Pan Dowdy. Pan Dowdy. Have you had your Pan Dowdy today? <laughs> Very simply, how we love to serve this. See that? Just kind of get all the fruits like that. You can either serve it with whipped cream, or I like it even with vanilla ice cream. And I'm like a two-scooper kind of guy, so. <laughs> little ice cream. Just a little bit of powdered sugar. And then a little bit of fresh mint. Pan Dowdy. All right, ladies. Got some neighbors over there. The great thing about Pan Dowdy is that it doesn't have to necessarily be like this seasonal thing because, you know, in the winter you can use a lot more apples and, and pears. And uh, I love this, see the, how the juice that it makes? That with a little bit of that cornstarch? Oh yeah. It's like a food of love thing. Now, speaking about food of love, works for me. My friend, Eric, and his wife, Gigi, she makes this carrot cake that, I've eaten a lot of carrot cakes, but I don't know if it's the simplicity of this one, the amount of time that it bakes to keep the moisture in, I don't know what the trick is, but I'm gonna share it with you right now. I take three basic cake pans, lightly oil them or butter them. I don't know if you have to do the flour thing. Just make sure that you got them greased enough. If you want to use butter, you can use butter. So three of them. Kind of a height thing with this cake. It's very simple. I'm going to start creaming some butter with a paddle, get it soft. I've got eggs and I've got sugar and vanilla. Basically, that's wet ingredients. The dry ingredients. Flour, which I want to sift for a couple of reasons. See what it's doing right there? It's aerating it. It's just giving it a little bit more air, a little lightness in that thing. Boy, that thing sounds sick. <laughs> Some cinnamonum, nonanum. <laughs> little salt, baking powder. Now, wet ingredients, dry ingredients. Hmm. We might have broke another one. <laughs> oh yeah, sometime I'll show you in the back. We have, well, we're not gonna. It's sort of a, an equipment cemetery. <laughs> oh yeah. I think Jay is back there right now, isn't he? Yeah, I don't see him out here. Where is he, is he hiding? Oh, there he He's is. missing, where is he? Oh, there he is. Ma'am, that's Jay, be careful. <laughs> Want to scrape down 
And if you're doing this with butter, you're doing this with shortening, folks, you're doing this with cream cheese, when you're creaming this, you gotta make sure that you scrape down your bowl first before you begin, or you'll create a lot of lumps. Now, we're gonna add the sugar. See, and that's, that's exactly what we're looking for here. That's called creaming. If you look under the baker's list of technology. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> Keeping it G. Gonna add a little vanilla. Grate a little bit of peeled carrot. You can do it as small as you want. I kind of like the big grate myself. That one there. Now, now that it's creamed, it says to add one egg. <laughs> Some of the flour. Okay. Hey, Doc, do you think you can come and help me over here? Yeah, you need... Uh, come on over for a second, will you? What you need, man? You mind adding another egg? Yeah, no problem. One at a time, right? One egg. Then I gotta go back in with some flour now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right, now you can give me another egg. One more egg, right? Okay. Oh, the hell with it. Put both of them in there, will you? <laughs> Thanks, Doc. I appreciate it. My pleasure. See, these guys are my friends. Or I would have jacked the machine on 10. <laughs> would have been... Oh. All right, now we're getting this dough together here, folks. What I'd like to do is one more time before we go to the pan... Scrape it down a bit. Then what we'll do... We'll add the carrot. Mmm. Yeah. Pecans. Again, easy. <laughs> Okay. Perfect. See the nice color of that? But it's kind of thick. We're going to divide it into the three pans, 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. I'll show you what it looks like when we come back. Doc Gibbs! Got the paddle now. Recap the cake. Divide the mixture into three. About 350 degrees. 25 minutes. Don't be sticking no toothpicks in there either. <laughs> that cake didn't do anything to you. <laughs> when they come out, four or five minutes, let them cool, then invert them. 
preferably on some sort of screen or rack so that it can aerate properly to cool them down. Now we'll move on to the simple icing. Cream cheese icing. We'll take some butter, cream cheese. Folks, one thing that I want to tell you is whenever you're working with cream cheese, you want to try to have it out at room temperature for at least an hour or two, or it just takes a long time to work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cream those together. And they're off. Lettuce is in the head. Rubber bands in the stretch. Here comes bubble gum sticking to the outside. Now, once it gets all nice and soft and creamed, we're going to add the sugar, powdered sugar. See, uh, my friend George over here, though, I, I, I like him, so I'm not going to put the machine on. Right, It'd be like a <laughs> beignet fight at Cafe Du <laughs> You ever had one of those? <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> so nice and easy. We want to start working that sugar into the cream cheese, and then we're going to scrape it down for our cream cheese icing. Now, let me tell you a little bit. How's it panned out? <laughs> See, it's coming across now. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, you can add yourself a little bit of enhancement, if you'd like. Yeah. This is a... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This seemed very interesting to me, because it was a vanilla flavored. So we'll just add just a touch in here. Not too much, it'll get too soft. And then what I do is I add some pecans. Oh, we're almost there. Scrape it down. Interesting, huh, vanilla vodka? <laughs> Gotta think of some other things to do with that. Get some ginger ale. Ginger ale would work. <laughs> Okay, now we're ready, we're in business here. So, Gigi's carrot cake, ready for the mission. Take one layer on a cake round, that way you can handle it. And we'll just take a little bit of icing. Now, let me tell you, I got a little bit of extra toppings here too, more pecans, toasted coconut, Oh yeah, this cake wheel too is great because you see you can turn it like that. We're just gonna kind of make a smooth layer. Looks good to me. Let's add a little more. We needed a double batch of this. Okay, so we'll just kind of move the cake layer like this. And we'll do the next layer. <laughs> Thought it was my cake for a minute. <laughs> next layer. See, the great thing, this cake is really moist, so it can really, sticks in there really, really good. Next layer like this here. <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. I can feel the love just building. The love is just escalating right now. Now, the third layer. Oh, there's so much love in here. It's not... It's starting to ooze across the floor right now. Really, really. 
must be the cake. Now, I'm going to show you this. We're going to finish this great cake. We're going to spread it. We're going to garnish it a little bit. Gigi's carrot cake. But I got to tell you, when we come back, I've got a coffee that's a classic that goes perfect with this. Don't even think about touching that dial. Stick around. Back in. So I've uh, kind of taken a little orange peel and uh, just took it right off the orange and I'm studying it with some clove. See how I've got this clove like this here? We'll put some orange peel inside of this pot. And then what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of brandy. Take a little bit of Grand Marnier. We'll just put that on the stove like that for a minute. Then I'll show you what we're going to do. Meanwhile, I started taking some toasted coconut and just kind of pressing it along the sides like this on my cake. See that? Oh, yeah, babe. So now we just take a little wedge like that for that carrot cake. Doesn't that look great? Oh, gee, just carrot cake. Then what we'll do now, if we can figure out how to work this thing. <laughs> we got more stuff child-proof these days. Even the adults can't work it. Do you know how to work this, you? <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> now, you want to be careful of, you know, so you hold on to them, but what we're doing basically is you take that peel like that, you see? It's called Cafe Brulot. And uh, one of my favorite all-time coffees. So once we get that peel going like that, oh yeah, babe, keeps you nice and warm. And then as soon as we evaporate some of the alcohol and we get that flavor, we add a little bit of sugar to this. And then we go in with some beautiful, strong coffee. Oh, yeah, babe. Doesn't that look good? And basically, we serve it. Oh. 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 Oh, goodness. Have you ever had one of these? No. Oh, you're in for a treat. We have one here for my friend George over here. See how he likes it. Cafe Brulot. It's so hot, it's still burning, Doc. Try that. Thank you, sir. This will really kick up the program a little bit. <laughs> Get that little wedge of oh. carrot cake. Unbelievable. Oh, thank you. We gotta try it. Yeah. Cut a little wedge here for the ladies. <laughs> try that. Cafe Brulot. Will that make you not feel good or what? It's delicious. You know what? I'm, I'm out of cups, but I'm just gonna have a bowl. <laughs> 
What the heck? I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you all tonight for joining me. And guess what? See you tomorrow, everybody!